right, so this is the very first video for the new version of Basehead. It's a quick little down and dirty video to help get you started. So I just launched Basehead and I'm at the start screen now. So I can hide it by either clicking here or just go up to the search box and do a simple search. And we'll show you the results list now. The first time you launch Basehead, a database will be auto created for you. Or you can go to the database menu and choose create new database here rename current database, delete current database, or open database, and all the other good stuff here. Um, for right now, all we care about is importing some files, which is control I on the PC or command I on the Mac, and it pulls up this lovely importing window. All the options on this page have tooltips describing what they do, and you can also look in the manual. Also, you'll see like these more infos scattered throughout the program with uh, more in-depth descriptions uh, so you don't have to really watch these videos as much or even look at the manual. So anyway, let's start off with importing some files here. So let's select the folder. Let's select this guy's down here. And I'm gonna name this import. You can actually create groups also and colorize files and import into these groups, but we're gonna skip over that for now. Let's actually rename this so it's actually it says first import and then hit import. There we go. So we have some from Basehead now. And once complete, you'll see the import appear in the left side peak tree also. But we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. It's just good practice to name every import. So in the future, you can easily remove or rescan chunks of your library. So now that we have some files in, we can click around, play them, or you can search them. You can change the top four search boxes to and you feel that it's searchable, so if you want to search for channels, path, folder, whatever. But we're going to leave it at description right now. And to quickly jump to these boxes, you can hit Control D or Control F to, for the second one. Or on the Mac, it's Command D and Command F. Next, you can choose what you want to see in the results list by right-clicking the header. Say you want to show the composer field, you can show it. Or if you want to hide it, you can get rid of it. Another thing to be aware of is what is actually shown after each search. So if you go to the database menu, we have these three options here. Display all records, display visible records, and display hidden records. For right now, just leave this on display all records. Because if you set it on display hidden records only, you'll be scratching your head wondering where your files are if you didn't set any files to hidden. So for right now, just leave this set on the default setting. All right, let's look at the search bar now. Basically, we have full Boolean searching. Uh, same as the Google. So you can do your AND searches, your OR searches, your NOT searches, or your EXACT searches. To do an AND search, simply just type two words or more with spaces in between them. So if you just want to look for car crash, do car space crash. If you want to do search for records that that have car but not crash, you put a, a negative symbol in front of the word you want to omit from the search. If you want to do an OR search, say you want to return records with punch or kick, you put a capital OR between them. If you want to do exact searches, use quotes. So say we want to find distant explosion. You can also do combo searches. So say if you know you have some explos that are 441 and WAV file only. So you can see how the four separate search boxes can come in really handy. And after a search, you'll see it appear in the left side peak tree in the recent searches node. This top left green button allows you to go back through the list, it's kind of like a web browser. And if you hold on control, you can click it and go forward through the list. All right, so the next sections to talk about are the info strip and the transport controls. The info strip is at the very bottom of Basehead. You'll see a lot of your notifications to the bottom right. Uh, like, you know, whenever you created your database, you'll see it flash in orange, or if presets are saved, all that kind of stuff. On the left is your DB hot swap box. This uh, will actually fill up with all the your database that you've recently opened, so you can easily switch between them real quick. Next to that is your database location. You can click this folder to open up another database. Or if you hold down um, control like many functions in Basehead, when you click the icon, it actually will show you the location of the current set value inside an Explorer or Finder. 
Next to that is your transfer path, which you want to set to usually your audio files folder of the project you're working on. And once again, if you hold on control when you click it, it will show it inside Explorer or Finder also. Let's move over to the transfer controls. These are pretty self-explanatory. You got your loop playback, your, your auto play, your reverse playback, and you have your pitch slider, continuous playback, and shuffle mode. And then, you know, you have your basic volume control and your pan and your MS decoding. Okay, so how do I get all my badass sounds out of bass head and into my DAW? Well, first off, you can just easily just drag and drop from the results list. Find a file, drag it on over, select multiple files, drag them on over. One thing I should point out, anything dragged from the results list is referenced. So consider the results list the same as Finder or Explorer. Nothing's getting moved, nothing is getting copied. If you want to copy files to your set transfer path with process and or not, you have to use the drag and drop bar. And that's at the bottom left here. So you'd actually just click here and drag over to your DAW. And also if you want to grab a region, say so you only want this piece right here, you also have to drag from the drag and drop bar. What I just did there was actually zoom in. You zoom in by clicking and dragging across the waveform. You can press Z to undo one level of zoom. Or if you zoom way in, you can actually hit A to zoom all the way back out. You can also use the tag list to tag a bunch of sounds and drag them all over all at once. So here I just find some sounds. So like that one, hit T, T, T. Let's grab a bunch of these here. Hit T, and you'll see them building up here on the tag list. So if you switch over to this page, here's all your tag list sounds. So now if you hold on control, you can drag this whole list over. Another way to do this is without even looking at the tag list. Just tag some sounds. Say so like those, like that, whatever. So now you can actually hold on control and drag from the drag and drop bar and it will actually drag the tag list instead of the selected sound in the results list. Of course, some people prefer to lay down a cursor and do a region spot and kind of spot the track kind of thing. So we have that in basehead for you guys. So first off, go to your target application on the option page and set it to your DAW. Right now I have new into 6.5 open right now. And then now, if you go and select any files inside basehead, you can hit X and it'll actually throw it to the pool or the bin in Pro Tools with the X command, or if you want to put it exactly on the track, you can select some files and hit S. And we'll toss them right to your DAW. So let's head over to the rename panel and check out all the naming options we have. There's uh, many things we can do. And you can uh, actually add pre and post descriptions. So if you want to add like, you know, MTL onto the front of every word, if they're all metal sounds, you can add that to the front. Uh, you can choose your target name and whether it's going to use the description as, as the start or you can use the description and file name or just file name by itself. I think description and file name tends to be the best option overall. And you can limit your character length over here. Or choose options like uh, decap and recap or remove spaces out of the name also. Here's a list of your most common key commands you'll be using. A full list of key commands we found on the website. And a few more things I want to point out before we end this video, and so you can get started cutting some sound, making some cool stuff, is the options. We have uh, a main options menu here, and all these options here pertain mainly to the results page. And you'll see settings, like little gear icons spread throughout the program, and those are just for those menus there. So you'll see one down here on the waveform. So all these settings and options pertain to the waveform only. And then we have an options tab also, and we try to keep everything in the options tab mainly for um, your global options. So we try to keep the global things here. And one of the main ones you probably want to turn on if you're using 4X Ultra or above is your transfer options for uh, doing your separate conversions now. So I'd, I would say if you're, if you're running at 4824 to set these boxes to 4824 so all your files are copied at the sample rate before it goes into Nuendo or Pro Tools or Reaper or whatever DAW you're using. Wow, this video is way longer than I expected it to take. But uh, you should have a good knowledge of Basehead now and be able to get up and running and put it in your workflow for the day. 
Uh, if you have any problems or questions, you feel free to email us on the contact form on the main website. And look out for new videos coming soon with the more advanced features of Forex Ultra. And um, enjoy.